Hey, welcome. It's Brian, and this is Guitar Solo Reactions. We're back with more Tool today. We are doing the song Jambi. Uh, this is off 10,000 Days. I am kind of basically referring to Wikipedia to kind of fill me in on some of this stuff. Uh, I did, The Pot was the first Tool song that I did for this channel. Uh, I've said it in other videos that I was kind of familiar with the first uh, EP, I think that was Opiate, and then that Undertow, I think, is maybe the next record, I'm not sure, but some of those songs I knew, um, and I probably have heard a smattering of other ones throughout the years, but I I've had a great time doing these, kind of basically discovering the band. I'm a pretty huge fan of extreme metal, uh, lots of stuff, uh, black metal, atmospheric black metal, a lot of death metal, a lot of doom, funeral doom, whatever. So uh, I love this band. Uh, I've been watching some videos uh, basically talking about the players, Danny talking or uh, Justin. I don't see a lot of Adam talking about stuff like guitar gear and all of that. So it might not be his thing. Uh, but anyway, lots of fun stuff. I am looking forward to doing way more. I've got a ton on my list, different videos. Uh, someone sent me, uh, which I appreciate, links to his channel where he has the drum parts transcribed and kind of playing real time with the track. I have not done those yet. I might do one or two of those just because I thought that was cool and nice of him to send me stuff. Anyway, if you like this kind of thing, I appreciate you watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate all the comments from before, the previous tool stuff. Uh, I will be probably venturing a little bit into Perfect Circle. I did one, the easy one, which of course is Judith. Uh, I may do some more down the road, but we'll see. So here we go, Tool and the song Jambi. Yeah. Right off the super cool guitar doing kind of that ostinato that repetitive figure while the bass and the drums are kind of weirdly shifting underneath uh you know i i wouldn't say maybe it's a polyrhythmic concept or i'm not sure if when you use the word polyrhythmic it applies to everything like that but um you can hear the bass line kind of changing and kind of hitting different uh, places in the bar that are not lined up in a way with the guitar. So uh, I like when they kind of coalesce. King Crimson, of course, does that kind of uh, different parts against each other and different time signatures. And then that probably rhythmic concept is you're playing those in your allotted thing. And then occasionally they line up, you know, to kind of do maybe a, a unison thing. Um, but anyway. like tablas.
there we go. Tool doing the song Jambi. So, uh, when I was listening to that, I was really listening to the bass. I am a huge convert or fan to Justin uh, Chaloner's um, bass sound. Chancellor, sorry. I said Chaloner. Fred Chaloner was a bass player from the Northwest that did all sorts of uh, great prog, kind of avant-garde rock. Anyway, he passed away a couple of years ago. So, anyway. Uh, Justin... Uh, gear wise, someone mentioned he used a fretless because I was talking about his basses and I knew he used a wall bass and that has a really cool um, kind of tone circuitry, pretty different than most basses. And it just really is a cool, cool bass sound. And he's a great player, obviously, as well. Uh, it also says he has a Music Man Stingray and a Gibson Thunderbird that he used in live shows in the mid 90s. No mention of a fretless. I don't hear any fretless playing so far, so uh, maybe that was uh, on a certain song. Um, he might have a few wall basses. Uh, he's got some Mesa Boogie amps, and then it looks like for effects, he uses a, a Turbo Rat occasionally. Um, uh, kind of, well, some boss stuff. An envelope filter. Kind of heard an envelope filter in there. Uh, oh, he's also got a color sound tone bender. That's cool. Uh, and some other fuzz effects and um, a lot of a lot of MXR stuff. Uh, what else does he have? He's got an extra board that has the MXR bass envelope filter, bass octaver, uh, uh, a Red Witch, uh, a Pentavocal tremolo, Red Witch Titan, Gaia Tone BR2. I don't know what that is. I think Red Witch is out of business. Uh, but his main effects are Tuner, Gaia Tone, Tremolo, Tech 21 Sans Amp, Distortion. Uh, they did kind of, they were early, early kind of amp sim pedals. I don't even know if I'd call it an amp sim, but uh, I don't know if they did. Uh, it looks like that's kind of a guitar one, but I think they did bass ones as well. Anyway, uh, a Boss CE2 or CE5 chorus, the BF2 flanger, a DD3 digital delay, these are all Boss, uh, an MXR bass envelope filter, like I mentioned, and that color sound tone bender fuzz, that's cool, and then some other, oh no, it's a Fox, wa, uh, Fox fuzz wah volume. Those are really kind of out there so some great effects and an amazing player an amazing band i'm growing to love them like i mentioned before i'm just every song is kind of like a new thing rhythmically and it just it really hits the heart of what i like which is heavy music uh lots of odd time stuff and just kind of cool riffs that are have lots of surprises in them and i love that in music no matter if it's you know fusion jazz rock um you know modern classical avant-garde jazz i love surprises so this band knows how to take an idea expand upon it and then build it bring it back down and use tons of great dynamics and kind of take you someplace and there's no higher acclaim i think for music is to kind of to take you somewhere else so, all right. Thanks again for watching. More tool to come. I appreciate it. Bye.